that primate was a pejorative term, mothers who are pregnant but we and are married. primates. We, we need all to have their response, and if they don't have legs, the information, they need to secure it upright to find out who mammal. they are supporting and stop supporting hate-mongering, because all of us support these national corporations in this country. Thank you. I'll be talking There that. has been primate uh, is a, a documentation. Term? I didn't know that. You didn't know that? No, I didn't Our know statements that. made on this program consistently. We will quote some of them. One of Grant's favorite words for African Americans is savages. Oh, cut it He out. says, we have in our city, Please. we have in our state of New York, we have in our nation, not hundreds of thousands, but millions of subhumanoids. Savages who really would, would feel more at home careening, careening along the sand of the Kalahara of the dry deserts of eastern Kenya. People who, for whatever reason, have not become civilized. Am I the only one who makes that observation? No, certainly not. Perhaps I express it more directly, more candidly, far less euphemistically than politicians would. Another quote. I can't take these screaming savages, whether they are in that African Methodist church, the EME church, or whether they are in the streets burning, robbing, looting, I've seen enough of it. Referring to a black fraternity party at Belmont Beach, New Jersey, you know the savage mind, the primitive, primordial mentality will respond to authority if they are convinced that that is authority serious. But on the other hand, being immature, anything they think they can get away with, they will press and press and press, which of course is what they've been doing all over the United now States of America. The, you see the mistake. As far as that stretch of beach there at Belmar the state, has been the, written off, shall we say, civilized people. All right. Now, the Despite mistake the that he's making, and it's an honest mistake. I, I'm going to, uh, example, would, you, would you turn that down because I want the audience to, I do have a right. After all, I suggested the microphone down there uh, and... Uh, I have no compunctions about cutting in here since they're talking about me. Uh, the fact of the matter is, I've come to the conclusion that Jesse is making an honest mistake. I don't think he's doing this out of malice. I've just come to that conclusion. Um, what he, the mistake that I believe he is making is in in transposing my remarks about people who have performed in certain ways and talking about those people and what he's suggesting is I'm talking about everybody. I am not talking about everybody. Uh, what they fail to point out in their, in their denunciation of me is that each time these comments were made, they were made in the aftermath of some outrageous conduct. Some outrageous conduct by a group of people. And the group of people who committed those acts are the people I'm referring to. But I should have said that this was a comedy show and they would have disregarded anything I would have said. At any rate, we'll uh, uh, let you hear more of the uh, press conference demonstration that is taking place 17 stories below this studio. And of course, those of you who are listening, uh, you may tune in and uh, or uh, call in. And as a matter of fact, people are calling in. Uh, suggested that um, they would uh, be provided with an open mic, and indeed they are. Again, I remind you, because some people uh, didn't hear, again, I remind you that uh, they had uh, rejected, rejected any conversation with me. Last Friday, I called the governor's office, and I spoke to a woman named Jennifer, and I had said to her that if Christy Whitman doesn't publicly apologize to Bob Grant, she will never again get my vote. And I can speak um, on behalf of many of my friends who feel the same way as well. Mr. Grant, I sell homes for a living. I want to let your audience in on a little bit of information here. And last week, I came across the homeowner. And he told me, George, I'll give you the listing of my house, providing you don't sell it to minorities. Of course, I had to walk away. I couldn't take the listing. However, last January, when I sold your house, Mr. Grant, not only did you sell your house to a minority, 
but the minority purchased the property under market value. I can't see how you're such a bigot and such a racist. All right. All right. Thank you, George. We're going back down to the uh, uh, sidewalk uh, and uh, the uh, press conference, the uh, uh, demonstration against me. Go ahead. In fact, we intend either they will either take of the show, they will either stop subsidizing the show, or we use our leverage to, in fact, engage in massive, selective patronage boycotts. What about Chuck Tyen, a uh, U.S. candidate for Senate in New Jersey? He has yet to denounce the show, and it's become an issue in the campaign. What are, what are the plans? I think uh, Reverend Reginald Jackson has made it very clear uh, that those who are, uh, who are in fact, embrace uh, this uh, racism spewing off of this show uh, by Bob Grant, they have made a statement of kinship with uh, the derogatory statements. This is not a slip of the lip. This is not a caller who called in and got out of hand. Uh, this is more than free speech. This is foul speech that's calculated to hurt, demean, and divide. We have a moral obligation. Indeed, we have a survival obligation to fight back. To say the kind of things he said about the African the Methodist Episcopal Church, to revert the women on welfare as maggots, to hope that Magic Johnson's HIV case will turn into full-blown AIDS that he might die quicker to set an example. That simply is beneath the dignity and the character of our nation. People of goodwill everywhere must stand up together and fight back. Reverend Charlton, you have upon occasion, Reverend Charlton, you have upon occasion appeared uh, on the WABC. So what's your general... Well, opinion? first of all, the fact is that Mr. Grant called me in my car about two weeks ago. That's the first time I appeared in two years. WABC, as you remember, offered me a job here, and I turned it down because of the tone of this station. So we've consistently uh, raised the issue. But I salute Reverend Jackson, Reginald Jackson, and the ministers in Jersey for bringing us back to the forefront, I will join in those public figures that will not appear on the show again, and I will be at Reverend Jackson's church Friday night to repent for ever being on it. <laughs> Jackson, what is Jackson. about uh, Mayor Chuck Tillian Tillian has said that he will uh, to listen to these tapes of the program and then make a decision. Has he approached you at all about listening to these tapes? Uh, have you set up a meeting with him about this? Speaker Hatayn called me on Sunday night and in fact called me today and I was not able to speak with him, but the position is clear. Speaker Hatayan knows what Mr. Grant has said, but I will gladly supply him with a copy of the tape, and upon hearing the tape, we expect him to respond. But let me add further. There is a conference this weekend in Newark at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church to which he has been invited to come, and he needs to come and clarify to the African-American community and, in fact, to the citizens of the state of New Jersey, all of them, his uh, position as it relates to race and hate speech. And understand, last year when Khalid Muhammad made his remarks, Speaker Hatayn called a special session of the General Assembly to repudiate those remarks. There cannot be a double standard regarding race and hate speech. If it's wrong for one, it's got to be wrong for everybody. We again invite him to that conference. We will be respectful to the speaker. But we do insist that he clarify for all of the citizens of New Jersey his position. Let me say this in closing. Number one, we certainly want to applaud public figures like Governor Whitman, uh, Reverend Al Sharpton, and others who've made a judgment not to aid uh, this uh, platform uh, of venom. But more than that, if New Jersey, transport New Jersey Transit and uh, the Long Island Railroad are sponsors. We would urge political leaders not only to not appear now that these uh, quotes are fully public. One might assume that some of these public figures may not have known the depth uh, of this meanness and the mean-spiritedness, but they, they do know now. But more than that, these public officials also are allowing tax monies to, to subsidize, and so we shall make a very public appeal to public officials not only to not appear on the show, but number two, have hearings about it, but number C, remove any ads that is in fact financed by the taxpayers. Please excuse us. Thank well, you very much. Mayor Giuliani, his, uh, the advertisers, in other words, are you asking, uh, are they going to have to pull their ads? Friday night. All right. On uh, WABC, it's that time to swing over to the Metro Traffic Control Center. Uh, 
I think it was a good idea I had to let you hear uh, what is uh, going on down there. And, um, you know. Uh, well, hello there, Bob. Yes, Bob. Uh, I uh, was able to hear a good portion of uh, what, of course, uh, you're covering down there. Uh, what are your... Uh, how do your impressions being down there in the street, uh, 17 floors away? <laughs> well, it was a pretty uh, jam-packed uh, sidewalk uh, press conference, Bob, and uh, interesting to note uh, that uh, Reverends Jackson and uh, uh, Sharpton say they are uh, reaching out to uh, Congressman Torricelli on your hot side of the Hudson, as well as uh, Congressman Charles Rangel on this side to aid in their endeavor. And uh, they are also taking to task someone uh, who figures very prominently in, uh, in uh, your push for uh, the, someone to replace uh, uh, Senator Lautenberg, that is uh, Chuck Hatayan. And they're asking uh, Mr. Hatayan to clarify his position as it relates to uh, his relationship uh, to you. Above and beyond that, they did hand out a list of uh, uh, sponsors. And uh, they also, as you probably heard earlier, cited some alleged remarks uh, attributed to you, which uh, they deem uh, to be racist. So where it goes from here is uh, anybody's guess. Uh, were you surprised at all, Bob, that they would not uh, go on with me, that they uh, wouldn't talk to me, especially Reverend Al, who's, uh, uh, who's been a guest on this program over the years? Well, a bit surprised, yes, uh, but uh, I approached Reverend Jackson in the initial instance and asked him if he would uh, go live with you, and he said, uh, not at this time. So maybe there's an opening there. Otherwise, I did ask Reverend Sharpton about the fact that he had appeared with you, I believe it was just last week, and uh, he said that uh, it was a case of uh, you reaching out to him when uh, he was in his car phone, but he says he has uh, joined uh, Governor Whitman in, uh, in uh, joining that list of individuals who, who will not appear on your uh, program anymore. Well, of course, uh, I appreciate uh, you being down there. I know it uh, couldn't have been uh, the most comfortable assignment you've had, Bob. Oh, it's all in a day's work for... Uh, a reporter like me who's uh, been out here for a long time actually was uh, pretty exciting. I am disappointed about the fact that uh, uh, there wasn't any further live dialogue between you and uh, the two reverends. Uh, I have a, I have a, a, a just a, a hunch that uh, Reverend Al will uh, come on, uh, maybe uh, not next week or the week after, but I think eventually he will because um, he has in the past. And, uh, you know, it could be instructive for our audience, for me, for him, for all of us, uh, to have an open dialogue. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes, uh, Bob, uh, and you know me, we've worked uh, together. It's 10 years that I joined this station, and you were one of the very first people I met here. Uh, sometimes you sit here in the studio, you say things, and uh, you have absolutely uh, no idea how they're being reacted to. Now, this is not copying a plea, not at all. But uh, when you hear other people uh, taking your words, even though many of them have been out of context, uh, you hear them coming back and you know, how they react, you say to yourself, well, okay, uh, he's uh, seeing it entirely differently than I did. You know, Bob, I hate to use that phrase out of context for one reason. Everybody uses it, but it's true. Well, I'd, uh, just in closing, I'd like to uh, say to you, Bob, that I would hope that you would uh, continue to... Uh, uh, check it out with uh, Messrs. Uh, Sharpton and uh, Jackson for an in-house dialogue. I think it would be very interesting to have you and those two individuals in studio, eyeball to eyeball, uh, dealing uh, with the situation up front and, uh, and in a candid manner. And I would suspect that uh, we'd all be a lot better off uh, under those kinds of circumstances and with that kind of uh, open dialogue. Well, that's very well put. Bob, I'm going to ask you if you would... Uh uh, well, perhaps uh, play the role of, uh, of initial ambassador. I say initial because I know the uh, feeling down there is very, obviously, uh, very sincere. But uh, if you would uh, uh, make the comment uh, in a similar vein to uh, the uh, gentleman there that you've just made to me, and uh, you did uh, tell them initially that uh, I was up here and had hoped that uh, they would talk to me. Well, I will certainly try it again, Bob. Thank you. That's Bob Capers down there. He's uh, uh, on the corner of uh, 7th Avenue and 33rd under the marquee uh, that says uh, Madison Square Garden. Okay, on WABC, this is Bob Grant, and we'll get back to our busy telephones. 
Look, I, I, um, I'm not going to uh, suggest that uh, Jesse and Al are not sincere. I'm sure they are. But I want to underscore again my belief that all this has come about because of the lausenberg Hatayan senatorial campaign. And I must say, uh, uh, if, uh, if, if I'm any judge of political uh, campaigns... It's a, a shrewd move, a shrewd move on the, on the uh, Lautenberg people uh, to come up with this approach and uh, the red herring issue. But again, those of you who vote in New Jersey, and I'm not even going to tell you to vote for Chuck Atayan right now. I'm not even going to tell you what candidate to vote for. You know who I'm for. Let me say this to those of you who have not made up your mind, and maybe even some of you who have. Think very carefully about what you do on November the 8th. Make sure your vote is not predicated on whatever you think about Bob Grant, pro or con. The candidate running against Frank Lautenberg is not Bob Grant. The candidate is a much more qualified individual, the Speaker of the House, Chuck Hatayan. Remember that. It's... Lautenberg versus Hatayan. Lautenberg versus Hatayan, not Lautenberg versus Grant. Now, Frank Lautenberg, maybe you're not listening. Maybe you've got one of your flunkies listening. Who's ever listening from the Lautenberg camp? Nice try, but I don't think it will work. I think the people of New Jersey are a little more intelligent, a little more sophisticated than you give them credit for. At any rate, I certainly hope so. Listen, as much as I love and respect you, I think that this is going to be like the beginning of the end. Because when these zoos get involved, their goal is to destroy people's lives. And that's what they're going to aim to do to you. Well, uh, so listen, just keep your eyes open, Bob. Keep fighting, man. Don't, well, don't... Uh, let me tell you something, Joe. Joe, they can't possibly destroy my life. I mean, I mean they want, they're going to try to get you thrown out of it. That's... Well, uh, that, yes, I'm sure that that's that definitely. really is what they would like to do. Uh, because you always want to silence people that uh, you uh, you fear or people that you uh, disagree with. Isn't that the American way? Of course it is. Um, yeah, you know, hey, listen. listen let, let, I know you're, you're number one. I know you're yeah. always right. Everybody knows you're right, and you got God on your side. So well, keep up the good work, buddy, all right? I guess we all have him on our side. Thank you. You're the best. Uh, WABC, here's... Uh, Marn from uh, Connecticut. Yes, hello. Uh, good afternoon, Bob. Um, I just listened to a little bit of that stupid diatribe coming from the streets of New York City. Yes. And, you know, they don't disturb me as much as, as, much as this fear is disturbing me about you. What, I uh, hope. What is that? What, what do you mean? What, it's, what? it's this, and I'll tell you quite, quite succinctly. Yes. Every time you talk, you tell the truth. If people don't like to hear it, tough. That's the way a lot of New Yorkers feel about you. You tell it the way it is. And if people can't deal with it, then they've just got to move over. What I'm hearing from you, and tell me that I'm wrong, yes. what I'm hearing from you is a kind of a mellowing out here that, that's beginning to smack of appeasement and conciliation. And, and what I'm saying to myself is this. I remember as a young woman when I started teaching, I was teaching a, a, a classroom of, of mostly black children. And uh, the word got out very quickly that uh, there were a lot of kids in the class who had parents with big mouths who didn't like me because my standards were very high. Well, they conspired to come together, meet me in my classroom, confront me. I was foolish and young, and I didn't understand really about the power play and I held out a hand to them, tried to understand their side, tried to be conciliatory in my tone and my activities. Yes. They took that to mean weakness, uh -huh. stupidity, vulnerability, and they came after me more viciously than before. I, I wisened up pretty fast, but too late for that episode. But I wisened up pretty fast after that. I hope that when you start calling jesse jackson sincere that you really are saying that tongue-in-cheek because the only thing this man is sincere about is his opportunistic agenda he is the biggest fraud to come into new york city in a long time 
and I don't want to see you or hear you mm. hold out a hand to these people just because of this brouhaha that's going on. Most of us who listen to you know you, respect you. You are the beacon of light that mm. we listen to every day for the truth. And please, Bob, don't start taking water. Don't change the way you talk. <laughs> uh -huh. Don't change, Bob. We need you in New York City. We don't want you out. Turn to these thugs and tell them to get lost. You've got your constituency, too. And tell them to go out and find a church, for God's sakes. Marn, I appreciate your call. I like your style, and I thank you very much. Uh, WABC, let's uh, swing over to uh, Drew from Darien. Uh, yes, Drew. Two, uh, two calls in a row from Connecticut. This has to be a record. Bob, uh, I echo that lady's sentiments exactly. In fact, I'm a member of probably not one of your most favorite professions. Uh, I'm a stockbroker. And you mentioned your, Arbit your Arbitron ratings at the top of the show. And I think right now, if you think they were good before this, they're probably going through the roof right now. If, uh, if Bob Grant were a stock, you would have doubled today. And, Bob, uh, don't protest too much. Uh, I hope you're reveling in this because what... What's going on is because you're, you're hurting them. You're hitting them where it hurts. They know that you're right. We know that you're right, and we want you to keep up the good work. I appreciate that, uh, Drew. Thank you very much. And uh, I tell you, I'm going to give you the greatest advice anybody could ever give anybody in the stock market. <laughs> What's and that? it's very easy. Buy low, sell high. Bob, one more thing. Never thought of that, did you? <laughs> yeah, I, I think I heard that back in Maryland's training. Yeah, yeah, went. yeah. <laughs> But, you know, the pendulum is swinging back in the right direction, and I think I haven't felt this good about the country since the early 80s when uh, Ronald Reagan was in office. Yeah. And we're fed up. We're not going to take it anymore. The trillion dollars that's been pumped into the great society over the past 30 years, we've all seen what that's created and done. Yeah. It hasn't worked. And these people know it. And it's, it's just going to continue. Now, November the 8th, by the way, Around 10.30, you're going to hear Rudy Giuliano, Giuliani swallow so hard in uh, Gracie Mansion because he realized he made a mistake. Well, if, uh, if, uh, if George Pataki loses, it won't be because of Rudy. It'll be because of that guy taking a, a big ego trip uh, and uh, spending uh, $10 million to take it. Uh, a guy by the name of Tom Golisano, uh, who has got to be a very selfish, very small very vicious person, but I thank you for the call, Drew. Okay, Bob, keep up the good work. All right, and um, of course, Galasano is not an African American, so I, I I just point that out because I'm getting a little sick and tired of these people. I'm talking about reporters who have who have bought into the the garbage, and um, uh, they they've been interviewing me like it's going out of style. I've been here all these years. They've known. They listen to the program lately. They're coming out of the trees. By the way, it's okay for me to say they're coming out of the trees because they're all white. All right. Jerry, hello. Bob. Yes, sir. I'm just calling uh, to tell you not to worry or give any thought to those jerks that are demonstrating against you and uh, WABC. And uh, if Governor Whitman has any sense of uh, fair play, she should apologize to you uh, and your uh, radio listeners, uh, when are they going to? When are the Republicans going to realize that these people don't vote uh, for Republicans anyway? They well, bullet vote Democrats almost exclusively. Well, that's true. If you're talking about the black vote, it usually does go. Uh, what do I mean? Usually, it always goes to the Democrats. It's only a question of whether they get ninety percent or ninety-five percent. Sometimes only eighty-five percent, which is a a real low, uh, but um, you're absolutely right, uh, and yet, uh, and yet, uh, time and time again, uh, people who know full well they're not going to get uh, uh, the vote uh, uh, do uh, what you say. However, there there are those people who might claim they might claim that um, they're being sincere, that they're not interested in the vote. Now, whether you want to believe that or not, you don't have to. But these are people who are saying. Uh, well, I want to reach out because I want to be the senator or the governor or the mayor uh, of all the people. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that's now, isn't it interesting that the meeting, speaking of politicians and you're in New Jersey, that Bobby Torricelli has gotten into the act. Why? Because Bobby Torricelli is one of those politicians that I have attacked. 
And guess what? The last time I looked, Barb, E. Torricelli was a paisan of mine. How does that grab you? Hey, I must be anti-Italian. You know, I'm so sick and tired of this double standard. Look at all the Italian-Americans I have slammed mercilessly. Mario Cuomo, the Sfacim, Jim Florio, the Flim Flam Man, Bobby Torricelli, Mr. Putrescence, just to name a few. Uh, hey, I must be anti-Italian. That's it. I'm anti-Italian. Come on, get off of it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's stop this being uh, obsessed with the idea that a person is bigoted against a certain group because he criticizes members of that group. I'm in front of Two Penn Plaza to rally in your favor against these liars, these rabble-rousers, and these filthy connivers. Just give us a time. You would have thousands of us there. Well, I probably would, uh, but I hadn't thought of that. Please. Uh, let me tell you that uh, I have been apprised of this. Uh, WLIB treated the news conference in front of WABC as a, quote, special report. Of course. And broke in with their regular programming to cover this, quote, story. The lead to the report stated, we go now to, uh, then they gave the reporter's name, covering the protest of racist Bob Grant at WABC. Robert, and uh, please Mr. Turner, who sent this to me... Says so much for fairness in reporting. Right. Give us a time and a date, please. There will be thousands of us there to well, shut them up. Well, uh, it's not my intention to shut them up. I I don't want to shut them up. I no, just with their lies, Bob. With their lies. Well, uh, I just want people to recognize that they're lies, and and people to recognize that uh, uh, what they say uh, doesn't really. Uh, doesn't really count in the market of public opinion. That's yeah. what I. That's what I'm hoping. But I'm going to leave it up to the people, oh, but because I have rally. faith. I have enough faith in the people, uh, like you, Peter. You understand? I will personally, write every sponsor on their list that if they discontinue patronizing your program, I will not buy their products. Hmm. If they stop patronizing your your wonderful program. And finally, Bob, I have heard you frequently use the word savages with white criminals. I know, I know. Times. I know. Uh, I wish people would look the word up in the dictionary so they would stop assuming automatically that I mean a specific racial group. Um, but that's uh, the era of the politically correct. Arbitron's number one AM radio station in New York. And on WABC, don't forget at 520, the uh, Rudy Giuliani uh, report. And uh, at 7 o'clock, that's immediately following um, the Bob Grant show, the Chuck Hattian frank Lautenberg debate, which will be the last debate prior to the November 8th election. And uh, John Manelli tomorrow at 11 o'clock, John sitting in for Ed Koch, right here on WABC. And uh, let's get back to our busy telephones. Uh, Robert from New York on the line. Hello, Robert. Hello, Bob. This is Robert DiCarlo, and uh, I just wanted to call, and I've been trying to get through to you for a couple of days, but... Uh, and the reason I'm calling is because I just want you to know and uh, everyone know that not all politicians uh, run when things get a little bit hot. Uh, I consider you a uh, friend. And, and when I was down and, and when, uh, you know, I've experienced a lot of negatives in my political career and, and you were there for me, and uh, I know what it's like to be what I consider libeled and slandered, that not all of us run. And I'm just calling to say that, uh, you know, I, I, I was uh, happy with your support in the past. Uh, you've been very good to me, uh, and uh, uh, your support in the future means a lot to me. And and uh, I'm just calling to say that uh, you know I'm behind you, and uh, keep up the good work. And to let everybody know in, in my neighborhood of uh, Bay Ridge and Diker Heights and Bensonhurst and Staten Island uh, that we're behind you, uh, and uh, we don't run from you. Well, I appreciate that, Senator. I thank you very much. How's your campaign going? Things are going along nicely. Uh, we're, we're working hard, and uh, we're doing what we have to do to see that uh, we win this race. But uh, even more important than, than my own race is, is just some words of encouragement, which I'm sure you don't even need, uh, that uh, not only am I proud of, of what you've done over the years, uh, not just for me, but for this community and for our city and for our state, 
Uh, and just to give you some words of encouragement, uh, again, which I don't think you need, uh, but there's, there's something that, you know, mm. a, a quote of mine that I uh, live by, you know, it's easy yeah. when, when somebody is riding high to uh, be their friend. And, uh, you know, when I was down and people were attacking me, you stood by me. And there's a favorite quote of mine uh, that uh, I oftentimes uh, use, and it's a quote by Dante uh, in the Inferno where he says that the uh, hottest places in hell are reserved for those who during times of great turmoil maintain their neutrality. Mm. And I think it's important that people, when, when a friend is, is being attacked, that, that good people uh, stand up and uh, let their voices be heard. And, uh, you know, you're one of them. So, uh, you know, mm. I appreciate that. And I appreciate your call. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Keep it up. Senator Robert DiCarlo of the 23rd Senatorial District of New York, and I appreciate that call. Herman checking in on the line on WABC. Herman from Essex County, New Jersey. Yes, Herman. Yeah, hi, Bob. I think the only thing you succeeded in doing in putting a microphone down on the street is to make me nauseated. <laughs> Those people down there don't want to respond to you. That reminds me of the donkey that, killed, that kicked the lion, but the lion was dead. But what I really call you for is I want to talk about your monologue. I thought, I thought you were right on target with your monologue because... You mentioned a couple of heroes, which were great, but I want to mention another hero who was a foreigner. Uh, in the 18th century, I think 200 years before, he was probably thinking of you, what's going on uh, with you now. His name was Voltaire. Of course, you know who he is. You called him before on your program. Yes, yes. And what he said, he said, it is dangerous to be right while all contemporary authorities are wrong. <laughs> Man, was he right 200 years ago. Yes, indeed. And let me tell you something, Bob. You will be fully vindicated because come November 8th, when Cuomo gets defeated, Pataki is in, when Lautenberg gets defeated, and Hightaya is in, and even in Essex County, with that Jesse Jurchin trying to uh, tout Cordell Cooper, forget it, mm. Treffinger is the winner. So you will be fully vindicated, and don't give up. And I... And I'm totally agreeing with that teacher who called back a few. Don't, don't be conciliatory to these people. They don't deserve it. They, they don't deserve uh, you at all, believe me. And from Emerson, New Jersey, Al, hello. Hello, Bob. Yes, Al. Um, you know, I find it very strange that all this hubbub with you comes up so soon after Slick Willie leaves town. I believe he or his aides has orchestrated all this. After all, you may affect the outcome not only on the governor's race in New York, but with the senatorial race in New Jersey. Uh, my opinion, you know, I, got, I, I get this feeling that he probably held a meeting in one of those smoke-filled hotel rooms and offered Giuliani a judgeship or uh, some other post. Uh, Giuliani, after all, is an opportunist. Uh, getting back to all this fuss... I think of the, you know, think of it. Who better than Willie to, to set up all the demonstrations? He's got the experience during that Vietnam War. <laughs> you know? Uh, anyway, that's my opinion. Well, I Just don't... find it strange that right after he leaves yeah. town, you know... Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't uh, share your opinion, but uh, it's an interesting one, nevertheless, and I, I thank you for sharing it, Al. Okay, Bob. Here's Thomas from Queens... On the telephone on WABC, yes, hello, Thomas. How you doing, Bob? I'm an African-American male with my own mind, and they need to cut that out. The reason that you're in the air is because you have an ed entertaining, informative program, and you're good at it. It's that simple. It's not, it's not all this racial thing. It's not that. If they want to do something, start your own show. Compete against it. I listen to you every day because it challenges. The thoughts, the ideas I hear are very informative. I'm not going to hear them anywhere else. And it challenges me. And I think it's just that simple. And I tell you to keep doing what you're doing, and people are listening to you. Thanks a lot. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Thomas. And there are many, many people like Thomas who call this program, but nobody pays attention to them. No. Uh, hello, Sal. Bob Grant here on WABC. Bob, it's always an honor to speak to you. Thank you. Bob, you're the best, and you're killing them because you speak, you speak the truth. And I'd like to ask the media when they're going to take on our esteemed president 
for appearing on that black Nazi station, LIB. So who's talking about a double standard? Mm. You've called criminal savages no matter what color they are. So keep doing exactly what you're doing, Bob. You got them on the ropes. And tell Jesse and Fat Al, thanks for raising your ratings even higher. <laughs> All right, Bob. All Take right. care, Bob. Thank you, Sal. Okay. They're having a big uh, 40th birthday uh, celebration for Al in uh, in Brooklyn. I think uh, I think I'll attend. Although you have to pay to attend, I think you have to call a seven one eight number, get tickets. Maybe they have uh, maybe they have Annie Oakleys for media types. Anybody know what an Annie Oakley is, and why do they call it that? Is, uh, who do we have here? Mohammed uh, calling on the line on WABC. Is that the gentleman's name from... Uh, Hi, Bob. How are you? From, you're for calling from Jackson, New Jersey, no, right? English Town, New Jersey. Oh, English Town. Yeah. Ah, okay. Raceway. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jesse Jackson has a nerve coming into town talking about bigotry and hate. Wasn't he the man about five years ago who came waltzing into this town declaring this town Jaime Town? That's the guy. That's the same guy. He has a nerve to stand up there talking about bigotry and hate. I would have liked to have been down there where he was giving that press conference, and I would have liked to have said, Jesse, what about Jaime Town? And I would have liked to see that puny little mustache curl up and watch him slither away in embarrassment. That's all, Bob. Thank you. Not at all, Bob. Thank you. Uh, Bill, uh, you're at WABC. Hello. Yeah, hello, Bob. Bill from New Jersey here. Bob, I think uh, the people are missing the point. Uh, our fourth forefathers would probably turn over in the graves if they knew what these politicians would do. Who, who would turn over his grave? Our forefathers. Oh, our forefathers. Would turn over. Yeah, all of them. <laughs> yeah, all of them. Every one of them. <laughs> this is not about Bob Grant. This is political. Unfortunately, this is what our politicians are doing today. And it's a big facade to fool the people. Bob Grant's been talking for I don't know how many years, but I've been listening for about three or four. I don't agree with everything you say. But, I, you know, you mentioned Mandela. Here's a man who spent 27 years, 27 years in a prison, and probably very difficult over there. I don't think Sharpton, or I don't think Jesse Jackson, or I don't think any of us could really go through the pressure. As but a matter of fact, do you know that several of his, uh, of his jailers were invited uh, to his uh, inauguration as special guests because uh, he said they were so kind to him? And uh, so decent to him, and they had forged a real friendship. And, of course, they were whites. Uh, we could all learn a lot from Nelson Mandela. And when I made that tribute to him months and months and months ago, uh, I said, wouldn't it be wonderful if our local black politicians could learn from Nelson Mandela? But, uh, it, you know, they, they, people choose to forget that. Yeah, wouldn't it be wonderful if they would do that, you know? But as a matter of fact, I, is, I amplified that and said, as a matter of fact, all of our politicians, yes. white as well as black, could learn from him. You know, and they're making you some sort of a bad guy, you know? Absolutely. Uh, oh, they're t are you kidding? Yeah. Some sort. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, uh, you know, there's, there's nobody has to defend you, because you say it like it is, you know? And I happen to be a guy that uh, believes in that, too. But the problem is, I happen to live in a town where we had a mayor for 47 years. Now, that's ridiculous, and you probably know what I'm talking about. But when we elect people in office, the congressmen for 40 and 30 and 40, the problem is it's them bums out there, and I'm going to use that word, that are sitting on their backside, that don't go out, don't register, and don't vote. This is where the problem is. When Lohenberg sends Jesse Jackson or Al Sharpton over to New York to cause a demonstration, if this is what going to elect this man, and they're going to put this man in office because of that, this is all this is. This is a facade. I've heard you on the radio a number, a number of times. You're you're not uh, attacking the black people. I got an awful lot of friends of mine that are black people. They're good people. They're hard-working people. These bums, these politicians, are using this for them to get votes, so they can continue to do what they want to do. If yeah. Yami wants to support the. Uh, Cuomo up there, La Fatim, or whatever you call him, I don't know. I don't support him. Who cares about it? Yeah. If he's doing it for the benefit of the people, fine. I mean, Mussolini in 1939 wanted to protect the Italian people from that nut that was running around over there. He wasn't a real bad guy. He was trying to protect his people. Maybe Guglielmi's trying to protect his people. I don't know. But the point I'm getting at, these people out here, they have to get off their backside, they have to go to the polls, and they have to start voting. 50% of the people in this country do not 
Well, that's true. Uh, Bill, as a matter of fact, you, you mentioned how the Democrats are trying to make an issue out of this, uh, not to uh, get me, but to hurt uh, Chuck Hattayan, for example. Uh, well, the fact of the matter is, uh, people will be able to hear what you're saying by virtue of staying tuned to WABC, because immediately following this broadcast, we're going to carry live and direct the debate, which will be taking place in Whippany, New Jersey, at 7 o'clock. The debate between the current senator, Frank Lausenberg, and the next senator from the state of New Jersey, Chuck Hattayan. Thank you, Bill. What do we have here? Uh, Margaret uh, on the line on WABC. Hello. Hello Margarita? Friend. Yes, thank you so much for taking my call. Um, I listen to you whenever I can, whenever my work permits me. And yes. um, today I heard that strange press conference and I wanted to ask ABC people's memories are short and I also heard certain things and I did not hear certain things I want them to put like short infomercial the voice of Bob Grant and there I want to have different kinds of quotes all your wonderful quotes where you did praise Mandela once I remember some caller called you and said something which you just didn't like about Roy Innes. I didn't find it any offensive, but maybe you did. And you, I remember how you reviewed the call and you said you're not good enough to even to clean the shoes of Roy Innes. I want all those quotes, and I, then I see who would have a nerve to call you any unacceptable labels. And it would be very nice and informative. You know, people would appreciate it. And also I wanted to say about those two gentlemen, if I, I don't know if I can't, I believe they're political hustlers, and what's so awful that they're profiting, profiting at very often people's grief. And um, mm. in case of Mr. Sharpton, I, I do believe man is, whatever, directly or indirectly responsible to bringing tremendous grief oh. to Yankel Rosenbaum's family by organizing that unneeded stupid riot or whatever it is. And he's responsible, and mm. that's what those people bring. Well, just think, uh, you have to give them credit for one thing. They are living lavishly, and yet they've never held a job. I mean, so Jesse said at one time he was a, a waiter or worked in some place where he admitted, where he uh, told uh, the uh, person interviewing him he used to spit in the white people's food. Now, uh, here's a guy who used to do that, and yet he has the gall, the gall, to call somebody else a racist. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm only one guy. I'm only one guy. True, I have this program. True, this program is regarded as very powerful. True, it does have a large and even growing audience. But I myself, I'm just one guy. But I'll tell you this. If those of you who have been listening uh, to uh, the program just today heard that so-called press conference and heard his uh, denunciation of me. If you keep in mind who's making the denunciation, if you keep in mind his past, if you keep in mind the statements Al Sharpton made about uh, sick and tired of these Jewish diamond merchants on 47th Street, um, then maybe you could put it all in perspective. So uh, I uh, hope we don't uh, all uh, stampede to the door uh, to condemn me when uh, we know full well that... Uh, there's a great deal of condemnation to go around, and not necessarily uh, at this point. But, uh, Margarita, I appreciate your support. Thank you. All right, let's get back to our busy telephone swinging in from Rye or calling in from Rye. Eddie, hello. Reverend Grant, this is your friend and supporter, Eddie, from Rye. I'd like to make two points. Yes, Eddie. I don't believe that the Reverend Galisano is spending $10 million on a lost cause. He'll pull votes from the Reverend Pataki. What did the Reverend Como promise him for doing it? Second, the demonstration downstairs was planned for this time just before Election Day to stop your attack on local liberals in the New York and New Jersey areas. The Reverend Twana Brawley Sharpton and the Reverend Jaime Town Jackson know they will not have the influence with Republicans that they have with liberal Dems. After the election, they will go back into the cracks in the floor they came out of. I would like you to make the Fatim salute for us, because I don't speak Italian as well as you do. You want the salute to the Fatim? That's right. I don't do it as uh, well as you. Uh, you know, come to think about it, we haven't done it for days. That's right. 
been so distracted. That's right. And, that's the name uh, of the game. They want yeah, to distract you. Yeah, that's right. And I do need the instant therapy that that phrase provides. But it provides it to me, too. All right, Eddie, you want me to do it, eh? Please. All right. Hey, Mario. As yet the May. There's a brother, you know, Svachim. And so he is. Very good. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Gene, you're on WABC. Hello. Hello, Bob. I just wanted to say, just keep on doing what you're doing. You're like a beacon of light in uh, this area. And as far as uh, Jesse Jackson goes, well, I he doesn't have much uh, to talk about with all the money he embezzled from Push. And, uh, all oh, the... Push Excel, where they said, yeah. they said to him, they said, uh, uh, you know, your bookkeeping was so sloppy, we're not even going to uh, pursue this anymore. And they let him off the hook. Wasn't that nice? Oh, yeah. You know, wasn't <laughs> oh, that nice? Yes. But, then... uh, you know, it is, it is incredible how this man lives so lavishly, uh, flying on airplanes, first class, all over the country. The beautiful, impeccable wardrobe he has, the shoes, the suits. Uh, uh, he, I recall the way he was set up at the hotel in Geneva, Switzerland, during the uh, Gorbachev, uh, uh, Ronald Reagan uh, summit. Back, uh, as a matter of fact, it commenced on November 18th, 1985. And uh, he was there because he invited himself. He said he was going to talk to Gorby. He was going to straighten things out. Well, of course he would straighten things out. Uh, in his fashion, which was to denounce the United States of America, allegedly his country. By the way, aside from anything else, I have never heard, I have never heard him defend America against any foreign adversary. Uh -huh. Have you? No, I haven't. You know why you never heard it? Because he's never done it. No, and I know he uh, goes around the country uh, singing, hey, Hey ho, how, how does that go? Hey ho, uh, Western culture's got to go. Um, thank you. <laughs> All right, thank <laughs> you. You're welcome. Bye. Yeah, goodbye. Uh, WABC Prime on WABC from Barrington. Hello, Marty. Good afternoon, Mr. Grant. Uh, regarding this cheap hatchet job that's being done on you, I would like to make two points. Number one, when the civil rights movement first began around 1954, the people that were involved in that movement had some very valid, very legitimate grievances. Uh, people were denied the right to vote. They were denied housing. They were denied education. They were denied employment simply because they were black. It is now 1994. A half century has elapsed. Those injustices were corrected decades ago. But once their goals were achieved, certain people said, well, wait a minute. Why stop now? This is like taking candy from a baby. Uh, we don't want equal rights. We want preferential rights. And it went on and on. And what started out as a civil rights movement has mutated into a black ethnocentric psychosis movement, has mutated into an anti-black paranoia movement. I'm sick of it. You're sick of it. Your listeners are sick of it. And point number two uh, regarding these seven black preachers who conducted a political, I say again, a political demonstration on the steps of the Capitol in Trenton, I would like to call your attention to IRS Regulation 501c3. This is the IRS regulation that grants tax-exempt status to churches on the condition that they keep their noses the hell out of politics. They are prohibited by law from endorsing a candidate criticizing a candidate or bringing any pressure to bear on a candidate. And I think it would be interesting to find out how many of these uh, seven churches are enjoying tax-exempt status. Well, they're all enjoying the tax-exempt status. And uh, if uh, Jesse Jackson uh, had a church... By the way, has anybody ever uh, heard him quote the Bible? Does he... Does he <laughs> I, no, no, seriously. I wonder if you asked him, what's your favorite passage from the Bible, whether he would really know or whether he'd go... Uh, 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 mm -mm. Uh, no, I, I, I say that about both of them because uh, uh, nobody seems to know anything about their preaching uh, background or their religious training. But uh, uh, there's, a, there's another point I want to uh, touch on that, uh, uh, that you uh, did mention, and that has to do with the uh, metamorphosis of the civil rights movement. You're right. Uh, when it did start, it certainly was needed. 
It certainly did redress many wrongs. I've commented on that in the past. I, I don't want to go into the litany of, uh, of all the, the things that we know have been accomplished. Uh, but uh, the fact is that they are using this now for their own personal gain. And who can blame them? It has worked so well. It has uh, uh, provided them with uh, lavish lifestyles and all the notoriety they want. And why? Because everybody else is folded like a... They're trying to take away my First Amendment right to listen to whatever I want to listen to because they think that if I listen to you, I'm automatically going to walk lockstep in what you say. Because, <laughs> see, I'm intelligent enough to understand this. When I listen to you, Howard Stern, Rush Limbaugh, LIB, LSD, whatever <laughs> station you want to have, I am intelligent enough to sit down and hear all the different comments, yeah. read all the different articles, and make my own opinion on what I think. Yep. Because that's the beauty of the First Amendment. See, these, these, and then this, this, this uh, poor excuse for a human being, Sharpton, <laughs> who was on Lynn Samuel's show two months ago, and then he said, I was not on ABC for two years, which is a lie. Because he was on Lim Samuel's show, uh, show when he was running for the Senate uh, about two or three months ago. Yeah. It's an absolute farce. And it's, an, it's, it's, a total, it's a total put down to the intelligence of anybody, black, Hispanic, white, whatever. It's a joke. It's a joke. And by the way, this whole thing, this whole thing with Christy Whitman, the whole thing about putting you down, this is a conspiracy. And who's at the head of this conspiracy? The one, the only. The Swatchin. The Swatchin. I guarantee you, this man got together with Lausenberg, Tora Boogalooselli, and the rest of the Democratic cabal say, look, this guy, he's doing damage to the Democratic Party. We got we to gotta silence this guy, you and the rest of people who disagree with you. And I'm telling you, everybody, citizens of New York, you better wake up. You better wake up. And listen, even if you don't like Pataki, Vote for him. Give him a chance. This is the reason why I'm saying this. Now, I was brought up Democratic. I was always told, you got to vote Democratic. you got to vote Democratic. It's always for the poor people, the poor people. Meanwhile, the Democrats are screwing the poor people. They want people to be on welfare because they're pocketing the damn money. It's a sham. Get rid of these bums. Enough of this 12 years this fachim. And, and just, just you got to have a change. If the guy doesn't work... Get somebody else, because you have the power. Go in there, you pull the lever, and you have the power. Bob, I finished with saying this. Mario, ascendame tus profionos fachim. And he is. Bob, I support you. I've listened to you since MCA. I've done a school report on you when I was going to Lehman College back in the 70s. And I've always, we disagree on a lot of things, but Bob... You are the best. Wow. Thank God for you. Uh, you got my support. Keep Thank on you. keeping on. Thank you, Cisco. Take Thank care. You. Okay. Well, uh, I must confess, that makes me feel good to hear people like Cisco and earlier Thomas and know that uh, Jesse and Al, uh, the, uh, the real hustlers out there, don't take in everybody. Hello, Robert from Tom's River. Hello. Greetings, Mr. Graham, from wall-to-wall -wall Bob Grant country. I have to agree with Cisco. Isn't it funny yesterday, Mr. Grant, that I, first I have two comments, and I'd like to give the Swatim salute, sir. Sure. Um, yesterday, Mr. Giuliani was saying how this is a time for change. This is a, a campaign of change this year. So why in the good Lord's name is he endorsing the incumbent? What a fake, phony fraud. And it's... second off, I want to I want to address those knuckleheads 17 floors below you the religious left. You know, if that was a bunch of quote unquote right w religious right wingers, yeah. the media would be completely and utterly up in arms. Not only, sir, was the day of that event timed, the, the time of the event was timed yeah. just in time to get it on the six o'clock news. And, sir, if alleged racism on ABC is the deal, the target, then the protest would have started three hours earlier. Sir, Mr. Grant, the reason they chose you is because you are the most effective target. To destroy the campaign of that Lausenberg. That is why they're protesting you, sir. And last but not least, Mario, Hacienda me, to say proveno and he is. Thank you, Mr. Grant. 
All right. Thank you, Robert. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. It's so obvious, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, uh, Lausenberg and company got together and they said, listen, look what happened to Flim Flam Florio last year. Uh, Bob Grant got behind Christy Whitman and uh, Florio lost. We don't want the same thing to happen this time to Frank. And so they have performed what is called a preemptive, uh, a preemptive strike. This is my sincere opinion, ladies and gentlemen. I know it may sound self-serving, but uh, I am certainly not the only one who has this opinion. Many editorialists across the Garden State uh, share the same view. So, um, Frank Lautenberg, I don't think it's going to work. I think there are enough intelligent people who think for themselves who will not be stampeded. And also, uh, you uh, people who are trying to orchestrate this uh, black boat, you prove that you do have a very low opinion of your fellow blacks because you must think they're just a bunch of sheep who are going to be herded the way you wish to herd them and that they're going to believe everything you say and do uh, what you uh, direct them to do. I really do not believe it's going to work. Mike, you're on WABC. Hello. Uh, yes. uh, for me, it's Pat and Walt to Walt, Bob Grant, country, let me say, we're behind you a thousand percent. Now, let me tell you something. These guys, they think they're going to try to carry you into the corner, but you got them on the ropes. You are scaring the hell out of them, and if they want to try to use the sponsors as they tried to threaten in the press conference of a boycott, let me tell you, we will buy twice as much as the product of your sponsors if they try any of that stuff. Keep hammering, don't let them get you, and I'll tell you, we're behind you, like I said, a thousand percent. Well, Mike, I appreciate uh, what you've said. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Here's Tony from Brooklyn on WABC. Hello, Tony. Yes, Mr. Grant, I'd be honored to attend the rally in your support, but it has to be on the weekend because I work like my father does <laughs> and his father did, <laughs> which I am proud to honor their last name, and I know who my mother is in bed with tonight. Hear that, Jesse, Al, work, family, pride, honor. The only rainbow Jesse is interested in is the one he released into a white man's soup. And Mr. Imp Imperiali was right earlier. Let's take this to the streets. I right. love my country too much to be seized by these foreign, un-American, paganistic, subhuman savages. Oh, my, my. I and I'd like to make the salute. I should dis uh, de uh, denounce you, but you are talking about a small group of individuals whose actions... You know, it's, it's, it's gotten so ridiculous. Gotten so ridiculous. Um, I'm through giving interviews. By the way, any of you people out there in media land, uh, if you're with print, if you're with television... I don't care who you're with. I'm not giving any more interviews. I'm sick and tired of you sending out these in, in, inquisitors trying to make points. And, uh, and of all places, Newsday. Uh, you know, uh, I'm sharing this with you, Tony, but I want everybody else to understand. Yes, sir. It, there was a time in America where you were held accountable for what you did. And then it became you're held accountable for what you said. Now, now, they're trying to hold you accountable for what they think you meant by what you said. Uh, it well, just so happens, it just so happens that uh, there are many phrases used by many people that are subject to interpretation. Now, if you, uh, you said a moment ago what you did about the individuals who were downstairs of course, at 4 o'clock. whole group of people by the actions of a few. Right. That I understand. And yet, and yet, uh, what they want me to do, uh, and they don't pay my salary. They, they are not my boss. And besides, uh, I've been in this business too long to have to be told what to say and when to say it. But what they want me to do is to chastise you, call you all kinds of names, denounce you, and then hang up on you. That's what they want me to do because of what you said a moment ago. Well, Mr. Grant, this incident was the flame that awakened the sleeping giant. Well, 
And I'd like to make the salute to Mario. Uh, will it make you feel better? It will make me feel tremendous. In, uh, by all means, then do it. Mario, asciendeme, tu se provino spacim. And he is very subdued, though, very subdued, Tony. No venom in your voice at all. Uh, no not, none at all. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, whatever happened to that guy, what was it, about a week ago? I should have taped that and in moments when I was feeling down on the dumps, play that. Because it's almost as funny as a Jay Diamond performance. There was a gentleman who called and he did it. Mario, ascend the bay. Tu se proprio no Remember that guy? He was funny. Uh, Joanne, hello. Uh, hello, Mr. Grant? Yes. Okay, this is the first time I'm calling you, but I really felt compelled to call you today because I'm, I'm outraged at the underhanded, outrageous hatchet job that's being orchestrated against you. I, I feel you're, you're the only person who speaks the truth in this country, and without people like you speaking out for this country, we're not going to have a country left to speak for anymore. I, as far as Lautenberg goes and Governor Whitman, I live in a part of New Jersey that may as well be out of Mongolia to both of them because uh, none of them, I don't think, knows where Ringwood, New Jersey is. Uh, 60% of Ringwood, New Jersey is, is state lands, and we get no support or help or aid from them for all of this, and, and our taxes are through the ceiling. I'm sure that that he's scared to death that he's going to be replaced, and I really hope he is. And as far as I heard part of what Reverend Jack, I call him that very loosely, uh, said before about the double standard in this country, there certainly is a double standard in this country, but if anything, it's against the white people in this country. I have a son who graduated from college with a bachelor's degree in journalism and a master's degree in sports communication. And he's applied for jobs and been given resumes, and his resumes have been praised, and he's been told what a fine job and been called for interviews. And then comes page two of the application that says race. And the minute he puts down white, it, it seems very funny, but all of a sudden his interview is a uh, Resume isn't as good as it was the day before when they weren't sure what race he was. I have, a, I have four children. I work and my husband works to put these children through school, through college. We are eligible for nothing in this country. No aid because it doesn't matter that they have the qualifications or that we're struggling to just pay our bills and just to live. We don't, we're not rich people by any means. But when it comes to getting any kind of financial aid, we're not eligible in this country. Yep. So as far as Mr. Jackson goes, he ought to look look the other way because it, there certainly is a double standard, but he's not the recipient of it, and nor is his people. You have uh, said it, I think, quite correctly, Joanne. I thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Grant. All right. Uh, we're going to swing over to the Metro Traffic Control Center right now. Don't forget the... Chuck Hattayan, Frank Lautenberg debate, which will air at 7 o'clock. That's immediately following this broadcast. But right now, uh, we're going to check in with uh, John Del Giorno in the Metro Traffic Control Center. John. Thank you very much, Mr. Grant. This report is brought to you by Coppola and Ackerman. Frank uh, from Albany. Hello. Yeah, Bob. Yes, now, sir. Now, through all this, you're going to find out who your true friends really are. Like, I ain't heard Rudy Giuliani come up and support you yet. He's been awful quiet about this issue. But uh, I want to say, now you sign. Well, I, I haven't asked him. I, I haven't uh, even thought of asking him. So uh, maybe we'll give him the benefit of the doubt and uh, say that uh, maybe if I had asked him, he would. Uh, he seems to be an independent-minded individual. Yeah, but you know how you silence a Jesse Jackson? Remember a couple of years ago, I think he was uh, Boy Cotton. I think Nike, I'm not sure. And he wanted to know their hiring practice and see their records. And the CEO of Nike challenged him and said, let's see your hiring practice. Let's see how you earn your money. He disappeared the next night. You didn't hear from him. So you ought to make him an offer. He'll refuse. So if he wants to silence you, tell Jesse, say, Jesse, if you retire from the television and the radio and the press forever, say, I'll get off the radio and see what he says to that. But I'm sure he ain't going to issue uh, take that challenge. Well, he's, he's enjoying... Uh 
He's having his cake and eat it too. He's 